this was the time, if there was ever a time, to get rid of any wear or deal with any wear inside of the gearbox. Uh, on this gear here, I decided I wanted to lap it. The bore was not consistent, so I lapped it. With a careful feel, you can get incredible accuracy with a split copper lap within microns. I did this gear first because I'm going to turn the rotor shaft to suit, so I wanted the bore finished. I set the rotor shaft up in the lathe using the steady rest and also left the original bearing on the shaft and just clamped it in the steady rest. I'll put a new bearing in eventually, but this was an easy way to hold things for turning up the shaft. While I was there, I cleaned up the center just in case and figured out a key size by using a pin. I had to make a stepped key as shown here and a great way to hold little pieces like this is using hold downs which is what people did before there were angle lock vices. They still are extremely useful for small pieces that can lift it even in an angle lock and if you don't have a set uh, I recommend that you get some. This keyway needs to be fastened to the shaft and I did so by drilling and countersinking some small screws. The old upper shaft was rather worn so I decided to make a new one and I used a heat treated chrome molly which proceeded to give me just a, a brutally awful finish. But not to fear as I've got a tool and cutter grinder that uh, serves double duty as a small light duty cylindrical grinder. And it's just a great machine to have in the shop. I reconditioned this from top to bottom myself, uh, scraped it all into uh, just the highest accuracy I possibly could and, and can quite readily grind things parallel and to dimension to a tenth. This little shaft needs a keyway along its length and a woodruff key at one end. Uh, photos above of me doing so in the mill and then the final assembly. Inside the motor there was a bearing retaining clip I needed to drill and tap holes for and I was able to use transfer screws to uh, find the hole locations. And everything's looking good so far. For the bolts that mount the gearbox to the aluminum plate, I ended up installing helicoil inserts. I just thought it was a better way to go than aluminum threads. For aesthetics, I decided to profile the aluminum plate. Here it is on the rotary table. Lots and lots of shavings. And uh, it's looking pretty good, if I immodestly say so myself. To make a gasket, I cut holes in a piece of paper and then fit it over the uh, gearbox and then used a tool just to rub around the edges where the paper made contact and imparted lines so that I could then cut out. And with that paper template, I made a gasket out of gasket material. With a clean up and a bit of paint, things are looking good. I replaced all of the rolling element bearings throughout this gearbox. Not gonna bother to show you each operation. It's fairly straightforward mechanical work. I also checked the balance of the flywheel and powered everything up and it just ran beautifully. For installation, I located and drilled and tapped new holes in the cast iron subplate and then reworked the linkage that connects the gearbox to the control up above. Uh, thanks for tuning in. In part three, we'll look at the electrics and how I use 3D printing to hook the original speed control up to a potentiometer hooked up to the VFD. Thanks for tuning in.